we hear from family tradition that he was a blacksmith and a gunsmith in Haywood County, North Carolina. He was taken British. He was taken prisoner by the British when he was wounded, and he spent five months in a British hospital recovering from the wound. And as soon as he was recovered, he managed to escape, and he fled to the hills of Georgia, where an uncle lived. Now, he never tells us the name of his father, and he never tells us the name of his uncle. So this is as far back as we've been able to determine where he came from. Other than we do understand that he was, his family originally came from England. When he was, after he escaped and went to Georgia, when he was fully recovered, he joined a group of Georgia militia and continued to fight until the end of the war. When the war was over, he returned to Georgia to the home of his uncle in Wilkes County, Georgia, and in 1782 married Sarah Sailors or Silers. We hear it both ways. Some people say Sailors, it was Sailors, and some say it was Silers. Absalom and Sarah lived in Georgia for a few years, and then they moved their family to Pickens County, South Carolina, a little place by the name of Table Rock. And then they lived there for several years, and then sometime prior to 1810, Absalom and Sarah and all their family moved to Haywood County, North Carolina, which is now Jackson County. Absalom died December the 9th, 1845, in Haywood County, North Carolina. Sarah died in 1857, and they're both buried in East Laporte in Jackson County, North Carolina. The pictures you're looking at right now, the first one is a picture of an old sandstone that has ABS hooper on it. That was his original headstone. Now this little cemetery is on top of a little mountain in Jackson County, North Carolina. It's a little church cemetery, and Absalom's headstone is right up at the head of the cemetery. He's looking over all the rest of them. And then several years ago, the DAR came in, and they erected this headstone. They didn't just erect this one, but they went around. They determined who and where all the Revolutionary War veterans were and in, uh, erected headstones at each of their graves that they could locate. I'm going to, now I, I want to tell you, Absalom had received some land grants for his service in the Revolutionary War, and then he bought additional land grants. And there are still some of his descendants living on these original land grants that he had in Jackson County, North Carolina. Now, Absalom and Sarah had 12 children. James was born in 1784. <coughs> As far as I know, he lived right around Haywood or Buncombe County, probably all the years that he was married. But we find where his son, Benjamin Chastain Hooper, moved down to Union County, Georgia, sometime around 1830 to 1840. I don't know exactly when. Now these next pictures you're going to be looking at are some descendants of James Hooper. This first one here is Thomas Jefferson. And this was Benjamin Chastain's son. So he would have been uh, a great grandson to Absalom. And he was pretty well known in Union County, Georgia. He owned a hotel and a drugstore. A pretty well-to-do man there in Union County, Georgia. The next picture is Thomas Jefferson's son, James Lafayette Hooper, and his wife, Eva. <coughs> he, was, uh, he went to pharmacy school and became a pharmacist. 
so he owned a drugstore there in Union County, Georgia. Well, he owned several around the state of Georgia, and then he ended up in Union County, Georgia. Towns County now. Union County later became, or it was divided up, and it became Towns County, Georgia. So most of the Hooper descendants right now are in Towns County, Georgia, from the group of Hoopers that went down there. The next picture you see is JT and I and Faye Twiggs. Now Faye is James Lafayette's daughter. So she is the descendant of Absalom's through James, his oldest son. And the next picture is a picture of Faye by Absalom's headstone. Now his next child was Elizabeth and she was born in 1786. And I don't have too much about her. I don't have any pictures of any of her descendants. And then we have Absalom Jr. was born in 1789. He went to Union County, Georgia. I think in all there was seven or eight of Absalom's children that ended up going to Union County, Georgia uh, prior to 1850. Eleanor was born in 1790. Andrew was born in 1792. He was, went to Union County. Nancy was born in 1794. Casio was born in 1796. Mary was born in 1798. All three of those girls and their husbands went to Union County, Georgia. Then we have Margaret that was born in 1800. Enos McHenry Hooper, born 1805. And he was my great-great-grandfather. And he went to Georgia, Union County, Georgia. William was born in 1806, and a lot of his descendants live around Jackson County, and some of his descendants still live on the original Absalom Hooper home place. Isaac was born in 1807, and he went to Union County, Georgia, and a lot of his descendants are still there today. Now, Enos McHenry is the one that we're going to talk more about because he was uh, my great-great-grandfather. He was born, like I said, in 1805, and he married in 1822 in Jackson County, North Carolina, Matilda Burrell. They called her Tildy. Prior to 1840, Enos and Matilda moved from Haywood County, North Carolina to Union County, Georgia. Prior to 1860, Enos and Matilda moved back over into North Carolina to Cherokee County, North Carolina. Now this is where they lived the rest of their days. And But Cherokee County, the part of Cherokee County that they lived in became Graham County, North Carolina. Enos and Matilda and their family were farmers. Matilda, we know, died in 1886 from some records from the Tennessee Baptist Valley Association. I've been unable to find out just when Enos died, but I would imagine that it was sometime around the same time that Matilda died. Enos and Matilda were listed in the 1880 census record for Graham County, North Carolina as being 75 years old. This stone you're looking at right now is a, an old sandstone that, as you can see on the top, it has E. Period Hooper. This was Enos's headstone until several years ago when we finally located it. We had in, we saw this stone and JT scraped green moss off the top of it and discovered that it said E. Hooper. He's bare, he and I assume Matilda, there was no stone for her, but Enos McHenry Hooper is buried right in, in the cemetery, right in behind the Old Mother Church in Robbinsville, North Carolina, which is in Graham County, North Carolina. Now, in 1987, JT and I were up there, and we ordered a new headstone. And we left the old one there when we had the new one installed, and we had Enos 
McHenry and Matilda's name both put on it. And uh, at that time we had not found exactly what date they died and or what year, so we just kind of estimated and put 1887, so we were pretty close. Now, Enos and Matilda had 12 children also. Now, their oldest son was named Levi, and this is Levi when he was a young man. He was born in 1823. He was born in Jackson County, North Carolina, or, or really uh, Haywood County, North Carolina at that time. And of course he went to Georgia with his parents and, and finished growing up there. And he met Elisa Antoinette Barong. And this is she. She is the daughter of a French immigrant that I don't think he immigrated the way you would think he was, he and a brother were kidnapped and put on a ship and brought to the United States. And Elisa's father escaped and went over into Georgia and grew up there. And Elisa Antoinette is the daughter. And Elisa Antoinette also had a brother named Jesse and later on, Jesse married into the Hooper family also, one of the Hooper descendants. The next picture you're going to look at is Levi and Elisa when they were grandma and grandpa's. And that's one of their granddaughters in the background. Now the next picture you see is Elisa and Levi's daughter. And she married Manuel, they didn't call it Manuel, Manuel Reinhardt. And then the next picture you see is Ada Reinhardt, Ada Smith now, but she was uh, a granddaughter to old Levi and Elisa Antoinette. And she is still living now. She's in her 80s and she's living in a retirement lodge in Blairsville, Georgia. And I also have some pictures of some of their, her children. This right here is a picture. Can you get this down? This is a picture of her, this is her son. And this is her daughter. And the son lives there in just out of Blair, in Young Harris, Georgia, which is near Blairsville. His name is Boyd Smith, and hers is Melvina. Uh, it's Boyd and Eunice on the right, and Melvina and I can't think of his name. Anyway, that's Melvina and her husband there then. Okay, let's go on to the other children of Enos and Matilda. There was Mac, born 1825, which I real I don't have anything about him. One of the Hooper descendants in Kansas had written a letter in 1960 saying that Mac Hooper was bushwhacked during the Civil War. The ne their next child was Count Pulaski Hooper, and that's our great grandfather. And this is a picture. Of, of th this is the best picture that I have of them. And that is Levi up on the top, the little boy. That's Levi, our grandfather, and Count Pulaski and Elizabeth Minerva, his wife. Now, we don't know the parents of Elizabeth Minerva. We find her in the 1850 census in uh, Union County, Georgia. Her last name was Oxford, and I have never been able to find who her parents were. And the next pictures you see is Count Pulaski's headstone and Elizabeth Minerva's headstone. Uh, they left Graham County, North Carolina. Well, first of all, they got married down in Georgia. 
and then they went over to Cherokee County, North Carolina, and then they left Cherokee and went back down into Towns County, Georgia, and then they went back to Cherokee County or Graham County, and then they went over into Monroe County, Tennessee. So these headstones you're looking at are in the Nachi Creek Cemetery in Monroe County. I'll tell you more about Count Pulaski in a few minutes. But let's go on and I'll give you the name of Enos and Matilda's other children. There was Jackson. I don't I have not been able to find out anything about him. Elizabeth, born 1830, Sarah, born 1834, George Washington, Hooper, born 1836. I have some pictures of his descendants I'll be showing you later. Isaac Van Vert, I have some pictures of him I'll show you in a minute. Martha, born 1842, Nancy, born 1843, Enos McHenry, Jr., born 1846, Enos McHenry Jr. left uh, Graham County, North Carolina, and went over to Monroe County, and then to Kansas, and then down into Oklahoma, and that's where he died. And then their last child was Polly, born 1849. Uh, Count Pulaski had four children. Actually, he had six, but four lived that we know of. I, if the other two lived, I don't have, I can't, could never find anything else about them. But in 1860, we find where they uh, had, uh, their oldest son was named Absalom. He was six years old, and I never found any more records of him. Uh, their next child was, um, Uh, Absalom was born, then William Pinckney, and they had Sarah Monterey, and they had Levi, who is our grandfather, and then they had a daughter named Matilda that I've never been able to find anything out about, and then they had a daughter named Becky, or Rebecca. I think the family knew her as Becky. I don't have anything as far as family records on Becky or Sarah Monterey. I think Echo, uh, Uncle Echo said they called her Monterey. Um, so let's go back and review what we've come up with. We had Absalom, then we had, we had Absalom, and then Enos McHenry, who was our great great-grandfather and then we have Count Pulaski who is our great-grandfather and then Levi born in uh, 1864 married Elizabeth Melinda Atkins in Monroe County Tennessee I forgot to tell you that Count Pulaski died April 11th 1900 and Minerva, his wife, died January 27th, 1900 in Monroe County, Tennessee. After these two died, Levi, who was our grandfather, and his family, all of his children, except Uncle Walter, and I think he came down here originally, but went back to Tennessee. But they came to Texas along with the Atkins family, and also uh, William Pinckney, uh, Levi's brother, came to Texas. Um, the Levi, our grandfather and grandmother, Elizabeth Melinda Atkins, had ten children. I'll name them over for you, even though you all probably know most of them. There was Flora, born 1883, Walter, born 1885, Tennessee, born November the 9th, 1886. William, or Uncle Bill Hooper, born December the 20th, 1890. Isaac Hooper, born December 29th, 1893. Bertha, born 1894. 
Minnie, born 1895. Lee, who is my father, was born May 17, 1900. Eddie was born March 16, 1902. And Eccles, the youngest, was born November the 3rd, 1909. Now, William Pinckney married Isabel Lee in Monroe County, Tennessee. <coughs> They had 11 children, and I have their names, but I don't have their family trees like I would like to have. There was Minerva Elizabeth, Roscoe, Thomas G, Annie G, Repta, Marion, Mamie, Ennis, or Enos, and Mary, William, and Otis. Now I want to go through and show you some pictures uh, that I have collected of, some of uh, some of the descendants of Enos and Enos McHenry, our great great grandfather, and also of Levi. Let's go first to uh, Count Pulaski, our great grandfather's brother. His name was Isaac Van Vert, and he married Parazade Hooper. Parazade's father always said that they, they were not related. His, his name was Dr. Ena C. Hooper, and he lived in Graham County, North Carolina. But he always said that he was not related. But in my research and in my studies, I think they were distantly related. So we have Isaac Van Vert and Parazade, and then we have their son, Jephthah Hooper, and his wife. And then this is, uh, this is their children. You can't tell very much about them, but uh, some of these live in, still live in Union County, Georgia, and others live in North Carolina. I have met most of these. And then we have another one of the descendants from Isaac Van Ver. He's a great-grandson, and he lives in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Now, Count Pulaski had a brother named George Washington. And I want to show you... So I'm just going to go through these other descendants and then we're going to go back to Levi's family. But this is one of George Washington's sons by a second marriage and his wife. He died in 1987. I never got to meet. His name is Oliver Hooper. I never got to meet Oliver. He died three weeks before we got back to Georgia that year when I finally located where he was. Now, um, Enos McHenry, our great-great-great-grandfather, had a son named Enos McHenry, Jr., and this is some of, this is one of his, some of his descendants that live in Oklahoma. This is a brother and sister, and this is a descendant from another one of Enos McHenry, Jr.'s children. This is Cleo Hooper. This is Cleo Hooper and her brother Kenneth, and then this is Dorothy. I met her in 1985 or 86, and she was living in a retirement condominium in uh, Oklahoma. Now I'm going to put some others up here. This is Jerry Taylor. He is a descendant from two of Absalom's children. This is his wife, Beth Bannister. But they live in Young Harris, Georgia. Jerry, several years ago, 1982, I think, or 83, he uh, put together a book, uh, a genealogy book in Towns County, Georgia, which had a lot of our hoopers in it. And that's where I got a lot of my information in talking with Jerry and from his book. But Jerry worked real hard putting that book together. And he's a descendant from Absalom, through Absalom Jr. and 
Isaac Hooper, both brothers. This is James Edward Hooper, and he's a descendant through uh, Andrew Hooper, another one of Isaac's children. And then we have Here we have Felix Hooper. He lives and his wife and Felix's sister. And they live on the old Absalom Hooper home place. He took us and showed us a, a corner where he said that's where Absalom's little log cabin stood. And then up on top, of, he took us up on top of another mountain there that had a Hooper cemetery. And there's a lot of the, the Hooper descendants from Absalom buried there. This is not a very plain picture. But Absalom uh, had two extra children to account for, and we found out they were grandsons that he had raised. One was named Benjamin Chastain Hooper, and the other one was named James Mack Hooper. This is Johnny Clayton right here. He is descended from James Mack Hooper. This is Lucille Hooper Bryson. Uh, we met her several years ago, and in Absalom's statement, Absalom and Sarah's statement, when Absalom was trying to draw a pension, there was uh, a statement in there that Clemens Hooper, who was 80-something years old, claimed that he was Absalom Hooper's brother. And this Lucille is descended from Clemens Hooper. I've also, in my writings, I have an article on Clemens Hooper and his descendants. This is a descendant of um, William Hooper, uh, Absalom Hooper's youngest son. Now, this, let me go back to this picture right here. This is Oliver, George Washington's son. And this right here, that's uh, Oliver's wife, Oliver's daughter, of course that's me. And this is Oliver's granddaughter. And by now she has she has a baby, so there's an additional one there. This is Naomi Garrett and her daughter Cynthia. And of course Oliver's wife. Okay, this This is Dolores Kritz. Dolores lives in um, Dolores lives in Tucson, Arizona. She's a librarian out there. Uh, several years ago, Dolores got in contact with me, and uh, one year while we were in Georgia on vacation, Dolores managed to fly up there, and we did a lot of research together. Visited and got acquainted. Dolores has helped me out a lot on on uh, Matilda Burrell's uh, ancestry because there's a, a man in uh, Colorado that had done extensive research on the Burrell family. And so uh, in my papers I have the ancestry chart that Dolores sent to me. Dolores's father, or Dolores descended through Levi Hooper, who was our grandfather, great grandfather's brother. <coughs> Dolores's grandfather was named Levi Jr. And back in 1906 or somewhere around there, he left uh, Towns County, Georgia, and went to uh, Pueblo, Colorado first, and then he moved on to Fresno, California. So most of Dolores's relatives uh, lived. In, in and around Fresno, California. This one right here, Don Barnes, he is also descended through Levi Hooper, through one of Levi Hooper's daughters. This right here is a family Bible that this Don Barnes still has in his possession. And this family Bible belonged to Levi and Eliza Antoinette. 
something interesting I'm going to show you right here is some of this scenery up there. Levi and Eliso Antoinette lived in a little, uh, it was a valley with a creek running through it, and it was called Scataway. And we still find that the road leading up through this valley, it, it's a valley with a, in a creek running through it, and it's called Scataway, and it's still called Scataway Road. This is uh, a picture of the, looking off of the Scataway Road down into the next picture down into the, the creek. And then, of course, this is just a picture of uh, the scenery there looking off of, down into the, the valley. Now, this is a picture of Lucy Hooper. She's a Hooper descendant. She lives in Towns County, Georgia. This is a picture. This is a picture of J.C. Hooper and George Beck. Now, J.C. Hooper owns a service station and grocery store there uh, in Hiawassee, Georgia, where all the Hoopers were raised and still live. And we go there and visit J.C. a lot. You can see right here. He's a real happy person, and he's real interesting to visit. Now, I think we will go to uh, our... Grandpa Levi Hooper's family. I'll show you a few of the pictures I've got of him. Now, most of the Hoopers, as far as I can determine, were farmers from way back. Uh, in, our grand, great grandfather Enos farmed, our great grandfather Pulaski farmed. Here's a picture that uh, someone had that I took a picture of, and it's uh, our grandpa farming. Here is our Levi and Elizabeth Melinda, grandma and grandpa, Hooper. And this is their uncles and Aunt Eddie with her, with Flora. And Flora married Roscoe Hooper, who was one of Grandpa's brothers, William, uh, he was the son of Grandpa's brother, William Pinckney, or Pink Hooper. And they lived around Rungy in Yorktown. As far as I know, that's about the only place they lived. The next child of Levi was Uncle Walter. Now, I don't have any really plain picture of Uncle Walter, but this is a picture of Uncle Walter his second wife, Ann, and their little girl, Shirley. This is their daughter, Shirley, now. And she's married to Neil Wood. And as far as I know, they live in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is Evelyn and Catherine. They're both daughters of Uncle Walter. They both live in Teleco Plains, Tennessee. I am named after Evelyn. My, mom, my mother was living with Evelyn's mother when I was born, and Evelyn's mother and Evelyn named me, and so they named me Mary Evelyn. Evelyn is just, has just recently, she, was a, she taught school all of her working years, I think from the time she was about 16 or 17, 18, she taught school in Tennessee, right around there. Most of the years that she taught was in Teleco Plains. And she retired several years ago, and she has a lot of problem with arthritis. And just recently, they have moved her to uh, the Sweetwater, Tennessee, convalescent home because they were afraid for her to be by herself anymore. But she enjoys living there. The next child of Levi is Aunt Ten, Tennessee, married Jim Coleman. And they lived in various places. Uh, I think they got married. I'm not positive, but I think they got married somewhere up where around uh, Carnes, in Carnes County. Then they moved to Sahita with the rest of the Hooper family moved to Sahita back in oh, probably somewhere around 19, before 1920. 
and uh, then they moved to Clayburg. The whole Hooper family and, and the kids and their wives and all moved to Clayburg County. And then from there they scattered different places. This is Uncle Bill Hooper and Aunt Em and Zephy and I think Freeman, their children. This is Uncle Isaac. He's the next one in line. And he married uh, Hazel, Idris. And this is a picture of Aunt Bertha. She's the next one. Bertha married Will Lee. And the next one is a picture of Aunt Minnie. She married Carl Martin. They lived in Premont for years and years and then they sold their farm there and moved to Arkansas and didn't like Arkansas and moved on to Tennessee. And they both died and are buried in Tennessee. This is my father, Lee Hooper, when he was a young man. He and my mother met. This is my mother. She was Edith Whitaker. She was born in Hobart, Oklahoma. My dad was born in Telco Plains, Tennessee. Mother born in Hobart, Oklahoma. And then her, after her mother died, her father remarried and they moved to San Antonio where he and her, her father and stepmother were both attorneys in San Antonio. And mama taught school in Sahita as a young girl and met daddy down there and married him. And shortly after they were married, they went to Tennessee and Kentucky and spent 14 years up there before they came back. Uh, Mama died in on February the 10th, 1947 in Three Rivers and from a car accident. My dad died January the 6th, 1965. They're both buried in Three Rivers, Texas. The next picture is Aunt Eddie. She lived she married Sam Moore, and they lived various places. So a few that I know of, Benavides, McMullen County, and Seguin. They both died while they were living in Seguin. The next one is Uncle Eccles. And Uncle Eccles never married. He uh, had his parents living with him most of the time. And... Uh, his last years he lived in Seguin. That's a picture of him when he was a little boy and that's a picture of him a few months before he died. I think this about ends my narration on the Hooper family. Uh, if any of anybody that listens to this or sees it uh, wants more information, I have lots of of information I can share with you and I'll be happy to. I did want to share some pictures, some other pictures that I have and I'd almost forgotten to. But this one right here, this picture is was taken of a Hooper reunion probably back in the 1930s. It was while we were still in Kentucky, so it had to be sometime in the 1930s. This next one was taken in uh, probably about 1947. It was in the in the 40s, no, 45, 46, somewhere along in there. But it was in the 40s. Then we come to our reunion last year, and we're just gonna go down the line here slowly and let you look at these pictures. But these were all. The rest of these pictures were pi uh, pictures of the family reunion that was taken uh, November the 26th, 1988. And today is November the 21st, 
this last picture that you see here is a picture of me and my brothers and sisters and their husbands and wives. I'm going to start from the oldest and identify them all for you. This is Walter Lee. He lives in Fairbanks, Alaska. We call him Sonny. Always have. This is Wilma. She's next and she lives in Austin, Texas. She's Wilma Esser, Wilma Jane Hooper Esser. This is Wilma's husband, Randy Esser. Then I'm next. My name is Mary. I live in Kingsville, Texas. This is my husband, J.T. Crocker. The next one is Betty, Betty Ann Johnson. And her husband is Melvin Johnson and they live in San Juan, Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. The next one is Garrett. This is Garrett Paul and he married Myra and they live Myra Griswold from Oklahoma but they live in Anchorage, Alaska. The next one is Ralph Edward and he married June Avant and they live in Catula, Texas. The baby of the family was Ima Jean. She was born here in Kingsville. She married Robert Needham here in Kingsville, and they live in Arlington, Texas now. Pat, that crooked teeth. <laughs> Terrible tragedies like that. Oh, but how proud we were of Warren. <laughs> <laughs>